In 1965, tens of thousands of US troops are heading for war in Vietnam. Backed up by B-52 bombers, helicopters and napalm, many expect the Viet Cong guerrillas to crumble in the face of unstoppable US firepower. Instead, in the jungles and swamps of Vietnam, the Americans discover combat is an exhausting slog in which casualties are high and they rarely get to fire first. The Vietnam War, which took place from 1955 to 1975, spanning two decades, was one of the most devastating conflicts the U.S. has been involved in in recent history, costing us over 50,000 troops uh, dead and over 300,000 that were wounded. It was a war that was not only influential, but also a war that left its mark on our history. When our troops hit the ground uh, over there, it just, you know, it was scary. It was, it was something they, unlike they've ever seen before, uh, facing, a, facing an enemy they've never seen before with uh, lush jungles, just uh, with forests, and with so much ground to cover, and so, much, so many things that got in their way, it was hard. The war was incredibly influential, and spawned various movies and games such as Platoon, We Were Soldiers, and Full Metal Jacket, just to name a few, and, of course, games like Shell Shock Nam 67, which we'll be taking a look at today. So grab something to drink, eat, sit back, relax, and welcome to Fruitcake's Take. This will be episode two on Shellshock Nom 67. Special forces are so sexy. For those that are unaware of what the Vietnam War actually was, it was a war that was fought primarily between North and South Vietnam with other outside forces backing each side up. For the North, it was uh, they were communist and they uh, wanted to unite North and South Vietnam under one regime, a communist regime, that was backed by um, communist countries like China and the Soviet Union at the time, while the South wanted independence and their freedom. And they were backed by the U.S., us, as well as other anti-communist countries. Um, and what actually ended up happening was because of the outside forces in play, it became sort of a proxy war between the U.S. and the Soviet Union uh, because it was basically anti-communism versus communism. Or at least that was the mainstream view uh, of the war at the time. It's obviously much more complicated than that, but... Um, yeah, it, it was a war that was, you know, for uh, fought uh, for independence, and it was a war that really tried to unite both sides, but there were just two opposing views uh, that were going on there. Additionally, the war was extremely brutal, very violent, and just messed up, and, you know, my, I would encourage any of you, if you're interested about the history of Vietnam to go look at YouTube channels and to go look at uh, external sources because there's a lot of depth to the war. Shell Shock Nam 67 takes place in the year 1967 in the Vietnam War where players will take on the role of Caleb Cal Walker who along with many GIs are sent into Vietnam to help the southern forces. Now during the game you will travel to uh, different locations um, such as places in southern Saigon and places in the Kotun province if I'm not mistaken. And your mission types basically go uh, from anywhere to search and destroy the enemy, destroying VC supply caches, disrupting supply lines, destroying gun emplacements, and taking out an HVT at one point, which that mission, not gonna lie, is pretty damn fun. One thing to take note of that is a neat little attention to detail is throughout the game as you progress, you will lose squad mates um, in quite horrific ways, unfortunately, but your squ the other squad mates that are alive on your team will actually, who survived those encounters or who have heard about them, will talk about it on base, which adds you know, some attachment to the characters in the game. Short timer told me the score. Ramirez was a good soldier and a good man. He'd be missed around here. I got that feeling, man. Like, this is the one. Just like Gunner and TikTok. I mean, this is the one where I buy the farm. You know, 
I smell another setup, man. No problem, though. If the VC are like rats here, <laughs> that's how I'm gonna kill them. Oh, yeah, man. If I go down, I'm taking a shitload of them with me, you hear? I'll have your back, buddy. And when the game ends, major spoilers, uh, your base gets bombed uh, by your own forces because you call in artillery to take out NVA who have overrun your base. And it just basically uh, what's left is Caleb, your character, with Monty, who is a character you meet earlier in the game, uh, kind of sitting there just, you know, absolutely blown away at the destruction of the base. You okay? And the game ends just kind of on that horrific note, which, you know, very much reflective of the war is just, it, it was a hellish experience. But it reflects on what the game gets really right, which is putting the player into the war itself and really giving you an insight to how nasty everything was. And as the player, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I felt attached to the characters and I felt attached to the experience. When Shellshock came out in 2004, it was met with mixed to negative reviews by gaming journalists, uh, pretty much every gaming journalist and other people alike. And I think what happened was this game was misunderstood, and I would even say greatly underappreciated. This is probably one of the best Vietnam games in terms of portraying how batshit crazy the war actually was, and how, in fact, just terrible uh, the world was, not just not just to our soldiers physically and psychologically, but really to everybody involved, because this war was nasty, and it just really, the, the troops that came home had PTSD, they just had trauma of going through this conflict, which the game, I believe, portrays very well. Damn DM for this. Massacre the villagers. I want out of here fast. This is killer shot. I'm leaving with these people. Now let's get done. Thought you messed up these civs pretty bad. I saw him. Shit, he was here. The VC general. His name is DM. And this massacre is all his handiwork. He just uh, he just cut him to pieces. He slaughtered him. I, I think that the journalist that came out, like, um, I think IGN or someone called the game tasteless and basically said that the war is just for our entertainment. It's like, dude, that, that, but that's the game's point, is that it's, it shows the war in a very frightening lens that is dirty, uh, at times, you know, disgusting. And, I mean, again, it, like, if, throughout the missions, uh, you're, the U.S., you know, like, you, you can see your own troops committing, you know, quote-unquote war crimes uh and just doing stuff like friendly fire accidents and other actions that really just are like fucking you know is it was that right was it morally right to do this the game shows just how um how devastating the war was for those troops you were goddamn yelling what the hell did you do, Kowalski? You really going psycho? Needless to say, if you're gonna play this game, you better not be a pansy, because it is not meant for pansies or for people that cannot take this kind of subject matter. If this game got re-released, and most kids today played it, not only would they get their butts handed to them, probably in terms of gameplay, but I don't think a lot of people would be able to handle it. Especially modern, quote-unquote modern, gaming journalists who not only have no guts, and no common sense to review things, but they just get easily offended. Tell me where I can find Diem. I don't know. I don't. I don't know you. I just... Last chance before I blow a hole in your lying head. Tell me where Diem is. I don't know no, you. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Wait. I have no information. No artillery. The Cambodian border. Go to river. Don't kill me. I'm white. And with all that being said, let's talk about the gameplay.
and this is where things get awesome. The despite some clunky controls, uh, given its time period. The gameplay of Shellshock is absolutely fantastic. When you go through each mission just mowing down hordes of VC, and you are just guns blazing, which is 99% of the time, it's a great experience. Um, which, you know, what's interesting because this game has gotten a lot of hate, and I don't know why, when it really is just that much fun to play. It just, it kind of blows me away. Um, there's plenty of weapons to use, uh, the environments are decent for, for what they created here. And, I mean, the mission objectives are typically just fun, but in most missions, you're just blowing away VC all the time, man. And it's just, it, it's a good, good time. Each weapon feels fun to use, and there is a wide variety of weapons, actually, from everything from, uh, from kind of DMR types, submachine guns, ARs. Heavy machine guns like the M60, M14, Swedish K, suppressed and unsuppressed, the AK-47, Car 98K, um, they're, they're all here. And what's even cooler is that not only are the weapons authentic to the time period, but um, the VC also will use American weapons against you, which actually happened in the war itself. So that's kind of a neat attention to detail. Oh, let's not also forget the rocket pistol, which is ridiculous. It's contraband, so you have to buy it from the... Uh, from the on-base contrabander, if you will. But uh, when you get this thing, man, you can blow people away with it, and it's great. When you're in combat, the guns feel punchy, and they feel like they do a lot of damage to your target, which makes the combat uh, satisfying. And, you know, the enemy, because they can use the wide variety of weapons, they will uh, shoot back, and they will shoot back semi-accurately. But if you're caught in crossfires, man, you can die pretty easily. So, gotta take cover. And what's even cooler is that when you're in base uh, and you go to the firing range, the like gunsmith the on man, base or the trouble. armor, or whatever you want to call him, he actually will give you information about each gun. And there's about like, oh, there's over five lines of dialogue that he will give you per weapon, whether that's the 1911, which is a 45 uh, ACP pistol, um, again, the Swedish K, which is a submachine gun for spec ops, the M60, um, you know, and of course, you know, even down to the rocket pistol, he'll give you information and little tidbits about the guns, which adds to the immersion, and it actually, again, reflects the effort that they put in to the game and to the, to the weapons themselves. The Swedish is a great light choice for those on the move. Aptly nicknamed Pig by guys in the know. Yeah, it's a beast to control, but if you can hold on, you shouldn't have much trouble. We don't call it the Widowmaker for nothing. 30 rounds, accurate and balanced, it's a real versatile killer. One thing I didn't realize about the Swedish K, or the actual designation, which is the M45, is that it shoots 9x19mm uh, bullets, which kind of interesting, because in-game I thought this thing shot, you know, at 45 at least, but uh, that's a small bullet to be looking at people, but it's just, anyway, you don't learn that in-game, but uh, I like to kind of look up that stuff on, on Wikipedia and what have you. Another cool attention to detail is that in Shellshock, uh, th there are women mixed in with the enemy VC combatants, which is actually, a, once again, another thing that actually happened in history. Women did fight with the men in the Viet Cong militia against the U.S. troops. And I'm not quite sure why, maybe it's just me, or maybe I haven't seen an, uh, uh, seen other examples of it just off the top of my head, but no Vietnam games really have the mixture of the two genders in, uh, with the infantry. So to see it here in Shellshock, uh, it's it's a cool attention to detail, and it's something other reviewers haven't even pointed out that I have seen. Another element that Shellshock Nom 67 gets right is the characters, which are not only likable, but uh, in combat, they're actually useful NPCs. Uh, when modern-day AAA NPCs are just so stupid. Um, in, in this uh, roster of characters, you have Monty, you have Ramirez, you have TikTok, you have Eyeball, Lieutenant O'Brien, who's your LT in the beginning, Psycho, and Short Timer are the main ones that you'll be working with. And all of them are voiced very well. And what you may have noticed is that Ramirez is voiced by Steve Bloom, who also did Cowboy Bebop back in the 90s, as, as well as many other projects. You shouldn't be sending in these guys. They'll be cut to pieces. My boys and me can do the job. Ramirez, we went over this before. You guys got more important work. Now get the hell out of my face. And Psycho is voiced by none other than D. Bradley Baker, who many of you might know him from the Star Wars The Clone Wars TV show. So, what do you think, man? About what? Mr. Lee up there. He's our new mascot. You are one sick individual, you know that? 
but the talent across the board, everybody is acted very well, and it really does help you help sell the characters to you, and it helps you get attached. Um, even your COs actually are voiced by, um, you know, decent voice actors who actually you know put effort into what they're doing. And while I like most of the characters, one of my favorites has to be Monty, man. When you unleash this guy, he is just a badass stud. <laughs> You go check in with Salt and see if the VC bitch wasn't lying. One thing that you may have noticed is me walking around the base camp. Now, what's cool about the base camp is it serves as kind of the hub area between missions. Even hearing the radio operator Deuce announce things from time to time. Our good neighbors in Thailand are sending us some help. 2,200 troops are on their way. Be sure and welcome them to the party. You can talk with different troops, you can listen to great music, all licensed tracks from like the 60s. And go to the firing range, and even, even romance people on the base such as the lovely nurses. Oh, I almost forgot to add that Jennifer Hale, who voices Naomi in Metal Gear Solid, is also the other nurse, main nurse, that is in the uh, nurse quarters. Look after the rookie, huh? Last thing I want to do is stitch up a good fighter who made one stupid mistake. Also, one thing I didn't know is that Quentin Flynn voices the U.S. soldiers, or some of them, and the pilots. Ha! <laughs> That's pretty cool. All that being said, though, however... Uh, and the fact, despite the fact that I love this game to death, which I really do, I'm sure that's the kind of position you're getting from me now, Shellshock Nom67 has problems. Um, first of all, it... The controls, as I said before, are clunky. Uh, the problem I had was that the mouse is quite floaty on PC, even with, like, V-Sync and everything disabled. The, the aiming's a little finicky. Um... You know, uh, some people might not like the movement style. It's, I mean, to me, I think it's fine. But the movement is, like, a little slow. Like, you, like your sprint's not really fast. Your sprint doesn't really recharge that fast. And, uh, but then again, you know, if you just run, like, diagonal, <laughs> you actually can pick up a decent amount of speed and get to where you're going. Um, second, you know, uh, while the weapons are decent in variety, some of them are weaker than others. And I could see certain players being put off by the arsenal um and just honestly by the gameplay style uh because if like you know if you don't really know what you're doing the vc can kill you quickly and some of those deaths can be frustrating particularly when you're fighting in the city uh area and the vc are all over the place and they're in the windows and they're on the roofs when they're on the windows and roofs and they're using like the china lake which is a grenade launcher against you it can get kind of frustrating because they also do like claymores in places so if you're getting just hammered 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 looking for cover you can oh accidentally trip a claymore and uh you're basically fucked so that that's another thing a third thing that can get on people's nerves i think is just you know the structure of missions um i some people would would find some of the missions probably really repetitive I, again you are mowing down vc most of the time and while i personally like it i think it's a great experience some people might find that too repetitive and there really isn't too much depth to the character progression other than you becoming special forces quite frankly i just wish there was more of what was offered here i think what was offered here was it was a good first experiment for Guerrilla Games, who, who developed this, uh, which you know, uh, with Eidos publishing it, but I just, you know, I, I wish there's more, and I think that's the sign of a good game. But those things are uh, some reasons I could see players being put off from the experience. This game is also in third person, which not everybody likes. I know certain people, like <clears throat> my brother, who does only shooters in first person mode, which. I respect that, but uh, third-person games are cool, too, you know? The game is also very short. Uh, on the hardest difficulty, I have beaten this thing in less than four hours. I think maybe if I was doing a really good run, I could probably get it done in three hours and 30 minutes. So that's something to take into account. The biggest issue that players will run into, though, is the fact that this game is abandoned. Where it is not legally available on any platform, which is so dumb because this game is oh, 
for 10 bucks, uh, another reviewer said people would be happy to pay that price. I believe that. And it should be on a storefront. I mean, Gorilla, Gorilla uh, made this. And I don't know who owns the IP now. But I wish that Gorilla would, would get the IP back and just re-release it for the PS5. Um, you know, and on platforms like Steam or GOG for the PC crowd. Um, so... And in order to get it running, you have to do some tweaking. Uh, you have to, for the way I did it, was I had to mount it uh, on like another, like on a CD virtual drive and then install the ISO for it. So that's, again, take that into account if you're willing to play this thing. You have to do some tweaking. But I will say this, if you get it up and running uh, and you get it installed correctly, you can fire the thing up and it's pretty much good to go. So you don't really have to do too much stuff beyond like the install process. Uh, so, but here's the deal this game is free so my whole tip my what's fruitcake's take on it you say or you ask my take fruitcake's take on this is it's absolutely worth the playthrough if you can install it correctly or if you find a cheap copy on ebay for the ps2 or the xbox which is the platforms it released on it is a good vietnam shooter that takes its source source material seriously and it also just gives players a different kind of experience in the Vietnam War. Uh, I would probably, if I'm going to rate it, I I would probably give it like an 8 out of 10. I think there's things it could do like a lot better. Um, but it is, it came out in 2004, so you have to cut it a little bit of slack. But my, my take on it is absolutely worth the playthrough, uh, especially for free. For free? I would say play this game a couple times. Really, really kind of soak in the experience. And but give it a shot. Don't be put off by the reviews that came before it. Not even mine. If you disagree with mine, that's all that's all fine and well. But just give it a shot. For free, you can't really argue with that price, right? Um, and who knows? You may end up liking it. And for me, it got me interested. It got me more interested to read more about the Vietnam War and to make this review and to put a little bit and to put a little bit of the history in the review itself. So Take what you will, but um, hey, I'm Captain Fruitcake101. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through a more obscure title, and many more game reviews are on the way. Episode three uh, may potentially be Medal of Honor, but I have not decided that yet. So, yeah, please stick around, subscribe, uh, come hang out. We do live streams. We live stream on Twitch uh, on weekends and some weekdays. And check out my other YouTube poops. Check out my review for Suicide Squad, which is on my channel right now. And uh, yeah, love to grow this channel and to build a cool community uh, and a place where we can all just relax and have fun, man, and freaking talk about whatever we want to talk about. You know, freaking with like a little to no scrutiny, man. You like what you like, I like what I like. Fair enough. Otherwise, you guys have a great day or night or wherever you're at in the world. Peace out. <laughs>